So there's a purpose for everything that God does. God doesn't do anything without a purpose. Amen. See, he's a, he's a very purposeful God. Right from the very beginning, you never get the idea that God is just flippant or God just does things that it's a, it's a spare of the moment. God just works. No, this is not our God. Our God will declare what he's going to do in the face of the enemy, and then he will do it. Amen. This is our God. See, there's a purpose for everything that he does. Now, all sons are subject to the chastening of the Lord in order that ultimately they will partake of his holiness, which tells you that some people can't partake of his holiness. Now, you know, this, this, this um, chapter is, is making a lot of contrast. Ultimately, everyone who is not like God will be weeded out of the kingdom of God. This is the ultimate end. Amen. This is the way, it's what's going to happen. Anything that's not like God has to go. And now see what he's doing right now is he's doing that in you. Anything that's not like him, it's got to go. And see, he's going he's gonna to judge his church first. He's going to judge his sons first. And he's doing it right now. In other words, not everyone can partake of his holiness. You know, someone said, well, that's not fair, but they just don't know God. That's just, you know, to make a statement like that, you just don't know God. God does what he wills. This is his, this is his kingdom. Ultimately, everyone's going to bow the knee to this God, this God of glory, this one that is right now, presently, purposefully chastening his sons. If ye be without chastisement, then are ye bastards and not sons. Now, some... Some are bastards. This is just the way it is. Mm -hmm. And I think that this word needs to be revived in the day that we're living in. I really do. Uh, we live in a time when um, people say things. Well, see, one, they say it's archaic, and um, it's a derogatory. Now, see, that, that got my attention right there. Because, see, they, they kind of got the sense of what God's trying to say here. It, it is a derogatory. It is. See, it's a bad thing to be a bastard, isn't it? Yeah. You see, you're, you're illegitimate. That's what the word, the, the root of the word. You're, you're not legitimate. You're illegitimate. You're not a son. See, well, the word bastard is, it's, there's some uh, things, some more other words that are synonyms of it that kind of give you an idea of the seriousness of this word. See, we live in a generation that they've even made it a swear word because they don't want people to say it. But see, this is a good word. The, the, some of the synonyms to help highlight the seriousness are scoundrel. It's a scoundrel, a villain, a rogue, a rascal, a weasel, a snake, a snake in the grass. This is not someone you'd want your children playing with. Good for nothing. What a word. Good for nothing. A reprobate, a lowlife. Even a creep. This is the kind of person we're talking about. See, the world wants to minimize it. See, they want to put it in the context of, well, you know, this really isn't politically correct to, to call people this because, you know, they might get the feeling that, that you don't like them. God, God calls people this. This is what God calls some people. And this is what he's going to hold up this contrast. This is why he doesn't chasten them. This is the foundation level. The Holy Spirit's using this word in, in this context to help us make a contrasting thought. This is a compound thought. Well, meaning that there's more than one thing involved in this thought. You have to have more than one thing going on in your mind if you're going to understand why he calls some people bastards. See, of course, all spiritual thinking's like this, isn't it? That's right. All spiritual thinking requires you to have more than one thing going on in your mind at the same time. Now you can compare spiritual things with spiritual things, and it takes it, it, it transforms from the milk to the meat. And until it, until it becomes the meat, you really haven't got any benefit from it. It's when we, with God, compare spiritual things with spiritual things that advancement is made in our thinking. And until advancement is made in our thinking, we will remain spiritual babies. You'll hear little chuckles when someone says you're a, he's a bastard and not a son. 
Why? Why? Because spiritual babies, they don't know what it means. They don't know what he's talking about. They don't know the context of what God's, he's saying something here, something so profound, so serious. And see, at the judgment, this will be, it'll be as serious as it is at the judgment. No one will be making light of the fact that they weren't a son. All the sons at the judgment, they'll be highly exalted. They'll be standing with Jesus. <laughs> you can't get any higher than that. Spiritual babies, they can't tell the difference between sons and bastards. That's why they question why God's doing it this way. They can't tell the difference between legitimate and illegitimate. It's like, well, but see, on the flesh level, you can't tell the difference. That's the problem. Yeah. You got to get out of the flesh and into the spirit before you can see there's a difference here. There is a very real distinction between someone who's walking in the spirit and someone who's not. Well, but you can't really tell that in the flesh. There are some who are legitimate children. See, this is the point. There's some that God is chastening. In other words, God doesn't waste his energy. See, God he doesn't waste his chastening on someone who ultimately can't partake of his holiness anyway. They're not sons. Some may ask, why would you make this kind of distinction? I mean, what, what, in the context of what he's talking about, what's he talking about? Only those who are children will partake of his holiness. See, in other words, if, you, if they're pressed right up to the reality of it, illegitimate children, they don't want anything to do with his holiness. So to further buttress this argument, which the Holy Spirit has introduced, he now brings a powerful example to our minds, something that the, you can get a hold of, something that, see, he knows that if you understand this, the Holy Spirit knows that if you can see the reasoning behind what God's doing, you'll give all diligence in making your calling election sure. You'll do it, but you got to understand it first. So he, he, he brings a statement and a question to bear on this. He says, first, first we'll look at the statement. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. It, we actually got the point. Now, now they, were, they were actually exercising somewhat of their own will. See, some things I was corrected for, it was just the fact that it annoyed my father. That really was it. It just annoyed him. So he said, don't do that. It wasn't that it was wrong. It was wrong for him. It was definitely wrong for me. And I was made aware of it, very aware that this was unacceptable behavior in his presence. Now, I could do it when I was off because it didn't bother me, but it bothered him. And so, see, I was, but I was chastened because of his preference. Yeah. And see, he had the authority. Mm -hmm. He had the rule. And actually, I honored him for it. See, I saw he's my father. And he has a certain amount of right to extend his will over me. Yeah. See, this is just right. right. This is right. Then he asked this question, shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? And live. See, it's, it's, it's unreasonable for you to balk at the chastening if you can see what God, it's God that's doing it. The one that created you, Amen. the one that owns you, the one that can either, you know, this is the Father of spirits now. He has the ability to cast you into hell or to save you. This is the God. That made all things. Well, at some, at some point in time, you've either heard this question asked or perhaps you've even asked this question. Why must I be in subjected to my parents? It's like, oh, woe is me. I see as a child, this didn't seem reasonable at the, at the time. When a child's young, subjection is just a way of life, but it's not a way of preference. See, that has to be taught. You have to be taught to, that this is the way things really are. And see, now, when you live in an age where parents don't chasten their children, or now you have, you have children that when they are grown, they don't understand the concept of the kingdom of heaven either. Amen. You see, this is this, God's given us this, whereby later he may make reference to it, and now you say, oh, yes, I remember that. I know what you're talking about. I remember when I was chastened. 